What if I told you that you could make gains in the gym by just going to the gym for about an hour a week and as few as five sets per muscle per week? That's actually exactly what I'm telling you today. Let me break down the science. Back by popular demand, not me, the sweater. People lost their minds last time I posted the sweater. I will keep the source confidential. I can't be spreading the anabolism to everyone. Dr. Mild Wolf here today with you, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching. Channeling my inner Dr. Pack here, talking about the minimum dose for muscle growth. What's the least you can do in the gym and still make gains? Ultimately, I'm sure you're a busy guy, gal, etc., and you don't have much time to be training every week. And let's say you only have about an hour in the week, let's say two half an hour sessions to make gains. Can you still make progress? It turns out, yes, you can. Based on a couple of meta-analyses by Schoenfeld and colleagues and by Rosten and colleagues from 2017, here's how much progress you can expect to make with different volumes. With just one to four sets per week per muscle, in terms of muscle growth, you can expect to make about 60% of your potential overall hypertrophy gains. Conversely, with strength, that number actually goes up to 80%. Generally, for strength, you'll need fewer sets than for muscle growth. If you jumped up the dose to five to nine sets per week, now you're getting about 80% of your maximum hypertrophy. And finally, if you want to optimize hypertrophy, you may need to train with 10 to 30 sets per week per muscle. But all in all, there are heavily diminishing returns to how much time you spend in the gym, how much you train, and how much hypertrophy you see. That first half an hour to a couple hours you spend in the gym every week is the most meaningful as far as muscle growth goes. So even if you can just spend an hour or two in the gym a week, you can still make gains. Now, to optimize muscle growth or even strength, you will need substantially more than just one to five or five to 10 sets based on some of the recent evidence that we've recently broken down over on Strong Advice Science in their podcast series. If you wanna spend about seven hours listening to us break down each study on that topic, give that podcast a listen. And these two meta-analyses by Schoenfeld and colleagues and Ralston and colleagues aren't the only ones broadly finding that you don't need a ton of sets a week or a ton of time in the gym to make gains. In fact, a more recent meta-analysis on volume by Basval and colleagues also found that the best hypertrophy was mostly found between 12 to 20 sets, with only slightly better hypertrophy, potentially with over 20 sets. And keep in mind, these numbers are in the context of one, low rest times, typically around a minute between sets, and two, when you're counting volume for multiple muscles at once. For example, a set of bench wouldn't just count as a set for your chest, but also a set for your triceps. And so if you're doing three sets of benching and three sets of tricep work twice a week, that is 12 sets for your triceps already. You're already in the 12 to 20 set range. Again, if you want to maximize hypertrophy, there is a chance that you'd want to do over 20 sets a week per muscle. But for a good amount of hypertrophy, you certainly don't need that many. If you've noticed the discrepancy between the results of Basval and Schoenfeld, you'll notice that Basval only looked at trained lifters. And in general, if you've been training for a few years, you may need at least five or so sets per week per muscle to see any appreciable muscle growth. But even then, five sets is not a lot, and that's once you've been training for a few years. Now you might be saying, 12 to 20 sets a week does sound like a lot of sets. Like that would take me a good amount of time in the gym, right? The bottom end of that range, 12 sets, might sound relatively high, but the two 30 minute sessions I published on this channel recently get you six sets very close to failure for multiple muscle groups at once in just half an hour. So with two to four of these sessions of half an hour each, you could be falling in this 12 to 20 sets per week per muscle recommendation for most, if not all of your muscle groups. And by hitting this recommendation, you might just see about 70 to 90% of your total potential hypertrophy you could be getting by spending an extra few hours in the gym past that. And in fact, let me throw in a further tip. Let's say you can't get to the gym. You're busy, you have kids, you have busy jobs, some days you just don't get to the gym at all. There's other ways that you can get those sets in. Have five or 10 minutes between two WAC meetings, do a set of push-ups, channeling my inner Andrew Tate that I didn't know I had here, apparently, but. Get the fuck up. What's wrong with you? Do some push-ups. Let's get back to the situation. And there's quite a few movements you can do with next to no equipment that are actually effective for hypertrophy. Again, are they maximally effective? No. Are they still pretty effective? Yeah, do some push-ups for your chest and triceps. Do some pull-ups for your back and biceps. If you're strong as hell, do some overhead push-ups for your front delts. Do some pistol squats, reverse Nordic curls, or sissy squats for your quads. And finally, do some Nordic curls for your hamstrings, or if you have any resistance available, you could even do some single leg RDLs. And shit, you can even train your calves with 
single-legged calf raises. There's actually a deceptively large number of pretty effective exercises you can do from your home. And so in a worst case scenario, where you're not able to get to the gym at all for a few days, getting a few sets of this stuff in might still get you like 50 to 70% of your hypertrophy. Again, there's a reason why elite bodybuilders and elite athletes have to train for hours and hours each week. But if you just want to get better, not necessarily maximize stimulus all the time, you have other stuff going on in life, you do not need to spend that much time in the gym. In just one to two hours a week, you could be getting the vast majority of your potential hypertrophy gains. In closing, let me give you a few more tips if you're pressed for time. Focus on the big rocks. There's certain things you can do to save time and still make solid muscle growth gains. One, get yourself one of these anabolic sweaters. If you'd like me to slap a Wolf Coaching logo on this sweater and sell it to you for a huge premium, leave a comment down below. First actual big takeaway, take each set close to failure. A recent meta regression by Robin and colleagues did find that the closer you take a set to failure, all else being equal, the more muscle growth you see from that set. And this applies all the way to failure. So if you can only do five sets a week per muscle, or let's say 10, take all of those very close to failure, if not to failure. Because it turns out, provided you're not stressed out of your mind, if you're only training twice a week, three times a week, recovery almost certainly won't be an issue for you. You can take your sets very close to failure, and as long as your volume isn't crazy high, you should be fine. Second tip, use time-saving strategies like drop sets and paired supersets. A meta-analysis by Coleman and colleagues found similar hypertrophy between drop sets and traditional straight sets across multiple studies with the caveat that drop sets reduce training time by about 50 to 70%. Do a hard set, drop the load by 20%, do another hard set, and repeat for as many sets as you have time for, generally capping it out at five sets. And the second technique, paired supersets, are when we switch back and forth between two exercises. By supersetting two exercises with minimal overlap in the musculature involved, we're able to maintain performance on both exercises, but cut down on training time substantially by up to 50 to 70% again. I have a whole video on both of those techniques that you can check out on my channel. Tip number three, with just 30 to 60 minutes or one to two hours a week in the gym, you're potentially getting up to 60 or 80% of your total respective growth potentially. And so don't think that just because you don't have a ton of time to get in the gym, that you can't make gains. Don't be defeatist. Tip number four, do not be silly with your warmups. If you're in the gym for half an hour or an hour a week, or even just a couple hours, spending half of that time warming up is not gonna do you any favors. Opt for a minimalist warm up, essentially just doing a couple of sets of the target movement really quickly before getting into your work sets. And once you're warm, going from one movement into the next, you may not even need to warm up. Next, because it doesn't take any additional time, but it does potentially increase stimulus, focus on getting a good stretch in all of your movements. Pick movements that focus on the stretch position and potentially use lengthened partials. The next tip is to use machines and dumbbells wherever possible for your exercises as they limit the amount of time taken to load up the bar, get the exercise set up, and so forth. It is essentially just plug and play. You grab the dumbbells and you get going. And if you've been lifting for a while, a fun little challenge is to just take machines within the gym full stack them, do them for at least five reps, and move on to the next machine. My little brain can't remember what weight I used plus how many reps I did. Breaking it down to just how many reps I did does save time. And finally, by a small margin, especially if you're supersetting different exercises using paired supersets, using bilateral movements where you're training both sides of your body at the same time might save a little bit of time compared to doing single arm or single leg movements. If you're pressed for time, you don't need to spend a ton of time in the gym to make any gains. You can make gains with relatively little time. Shout out Dr. Pack. I just need to shave my hair, dye this ginger, I guess, and acquire a thick Greek accent. And one day I will be more like him. On a serious note, he did his PhD on the minimum dose for strength. And he's doing some further research into the minimum dose for hypertrophy. And so if you want to see plenty of content just like this in the same sort of vein, check out his channel that I'll link below. In the meantime, please comment, like, subscribe, if you enjoyed the video, leave a comment down below letting me know how much you enjoyed it and what other topics you'd like to see me break down from an exercise science perspective. As always, go ahead and have a phenomenal day. I will see you in that next one back here in the studio. Peace.